Short curl. Folks, before I go too much farther on this video, I, I want to take a few moments to, to address some housekeeping issues having to do with YouTube and the channel. Uh, first off, YouTube has changed the way it's monetizing and allowing me to run ads during the videos. Now, I've always put skippable ads in the middle of the videos. If I don't do that, YouTube doesn't promote it, and I'll just be sitting here twiddling my thumbs and talking to myself even more than I do now. So I got to do that, or I'm just wasting my time. I don't get paid much. In fact, so far, I spent more in cameras than I have anything else. Being that as it may, YouTube has changed my options for putting videos, uh, excuse me, ads in the middle of videos. I can no longer choose what kind of ads I can put in the video or how long they'll run. I have absolutely no control. And I understand why they're doing it, because they're not making any money. We sit here for hours watching YouTube for basically free if we want to, just watch a few ads. But nobody's using, or nobody's watching the ads, using blockers and things like that. And so they're trying everything they can to keep making this a viable platform. And I don't blame them. You wouldn't want to lose money either, would you? So, if you're seeing ads and more ads, that's the reason. I've never been a big fan of always yelling at you to tell you to like, subscribe, and follow me on this and follow me on that. I just don't do it. In fact, I think there's been one spoof video that I did. I'll put a link somewhere up to that where we did just that, but that was all in fun. So... Don't shoot the messenger. I don't have any control over the ads in the middle anymore. That's just the way it's going to be. And even channels that aren't monetized, YouTube will put ads in the middle of them without the person even knowing it. So we're kind of stuck with it. Now, they're trying to wage war with the, uh, the ad blockers. And I understand that too. So, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Revenues for everybody are way down. I'll be honest with you, the last video I did had 6,000 views, and I think I was paid $18 for it. It's hard to buy cameras. And not alone the hours and hours and hours I spend doing this. So... That's just one of the problems we're going to face from here out. I tell you, I a long time ago went a long time ago went to YouTube Premium. I think it's twenty bucks a month, and I get to watch all of the YouTube I want ad free completely on every device I own: my phone, my tablet, laptops, computers here at the shop. So I kind of think that's a good deal. And one thing about that, not all that money goes to YouTube. YouTube uses part of the money from that revenue stream and divides it amongst people like myself and content creators. So part of your money that you spend on premium goes to us. That's not a lot. But, you know, it adds up over the three or 4,000 years that you're associated with it. Another thing I want to say, and this is it, then we'll get on to making some chips. I haven't ever mentioned it on stream, but two or three months ago, I 
turned on channel memberships just to see what would happen. I made four different levels of membership. Uh, let's see. Uh, the lowest price is like two or three bucks a month. And it's like, help keep the lights on. And uh, the next one I see is buy me a coffee. Then the next one is buy me a beer. Non-alcoholic, of course. And then the next one, the highest level, is by me and on a beer. So, so far, six people have done it, and I, and, and I appreciate it. Uh, Woody Hastings, Rick Denny, Graham O'Donohoe, Mark Lester, Bent Brun Rasmu. I'm sorry, I, I, I did that line worse than I do in a play. It's uh, B-R-U-U-N dash R-A-S-M-U dot dot dot. If it's longer than that, YouTube ain't got the, the bandwidth to keep the letters after the dot dot dot. And Richard Morton. Thank you, guys. Sorry I haven't ever said anything about it. But now I'm looking for some little plaques that I can laser engrave your name on and hang them on the wall somewhere in the shop. All right, now on to the video. It's just a down and dirty me getting ready to uh, rebuild that piece that I failed miserably on. So I hope you enjoy it. On with the show. Hi, folks. God, I look scruffy. It's the last time you'll see me like this for a while. Life made me get an appointment about a month and a half ago. So tomorrow it gets all shaved off and I go back to what I normally look like. God, that's a frightening thought. I did this for a play. In fact, we finished it. Here's a... I don't know if you guys can see this okay or not. But that's what I've been looking like for a while. Kind of a nice... Nice picture. That's the cast on the set of uh, An Old Henry Christmas. Merry Christmas to all you guys, because this will be the last one for the year. If you've been following along, you saw that I failed miserably at a little part for my RV. This is the aluminum welding job that I, from hell. I blew the heck out of the end of it. So, I'm going to try it a different way. After I melted it all up, I put it back in Bob and bored it out. I could use this, but it looks terrible and I don't like it, so we're going to try it again. This time, I'm going to make this cylinder part solid, weld it, and then bore it out on the Bob. I'm also going to stick this in my heat treating oven and get it all up to about uh, about 250, 230, somewhere in there. And these are the blanks that I'm going to use. So right now we're going to mess with Bob. Depending on how it goes, depends on how long I want to make the video. Show you what else I do tomorrow. Maybe go through cutting all the other piece out. It's not going to take too long. Let's see if I can screw it up again. Stick around. And for those of you that want to see the bridge port being worked on, there's the bridge port being worked on. Everything's up here. I started putting Bondo on the spots. Got some icing to go on it. And then the paint. And it's all sitting here and we're starting. Got some really marks on the casting that I wanted to start filling in. These were pretty deep ones. There's one up here. But I am working on it. One of you viewers is really upset. <laughs> Got to put some in there too. But it's there. It's getting done. Well, this is Bob. 
Bob's real name is we don't call him that because too many people argue about how to pronounce it so it's Bob okay we're gonna get started and make these cylinders tonight and then tomorrow we'll do the rest I'm gonna let you ride up here on the carousel tool changers all set up for making this part already so sling it around to the right one and we'll get started go right up here i like this little dji camera it's got a screen on the front so i can easily see which way i'm pointing you down to the ground or whatever Gotta go around one more time. Lock it in place. And we'll swing it around. Now I don't have a collet big enough for this size, so put it in the three jaw and we'll go from there. All this brown stuff you see is not rust, it is oil. This machine uses a, an oil for a coolant, which I don't use on aluminum, but on steel, it makes it nice. And you're not supposed to use any kind of water-based coolant because of the pump in this machine. Pull you back a little bit. Basically, this part here we got to get down to about 1.3, and we're starting at one and a half inches. So we got to take 200 thousandths off of it, and it's not a critical dimension. See how wobbly this looks. Oh, it's pretty cool. I'm going to go and turn down the speed a little bit. So we'll get it all fixed up. Touch off. Now that's going to give me just a rough idea of how much I have to take off now that's at 175 so that would be 10 20 30,000 off there. Let's see what happens.
There's 35. Let's see what happens with that one. Now, if you notice, I got a bunch of long stringy chips here. We'll see if I can make that go away to where it chips them a little bit more. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. And there's two ways you can do it. You can either increase the feed or the depth of cut, the speed of the feed, I guess I'd say. Well, I'm going to go on up to 50 thousandths and let's see how uh, that affects it. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousandths. Pretty stringy. Now, while it's doing this, I'm going to increase the feed. Made them curl into real tight curls. I like that. I get too carried away let's see where we are I have 88 thousandths left to take off I'm gonna split it let's go 10 20 30 40 1 2 3 4 I've increased the speed. I just decreased the depth of cut a little bit, but maybe a faster speed is what we need to take it off in little pieces. We be getting there. Got forty three thousandths to take over or take off. Ten, twenty, thirty. Forty. One, two, three, four. All right. That's not hot at all. Sometimes when you're doing aluminum, you're trying to get real critical. You take off too much, you make the, the piece heat up. But like I say, this isn't a precision part. This is something I'm going to weld on. Yeah. 
You notice they're still getting attack curled, but they're getting longer. The reason they're getting longer is because the diameter of my piece here, can y'all see? Diameter of my piece here is getting skinnier, not as thick now. So it's not taking as much metal off per revolution as it was 50 thousandths ago. Within two thousandths of my target, a little bit under, but that's fine. Now, we'll clean this up a little bit, and we'll go from there. That's plenty fine. Reason being, I'm now going to, uh, I've made this longer than is necessary by a good bit. And the reason I made that longer, I don't even watch it. The reason I made this longer was because I want to have a, a welding portion on and off. So I don't burn out the edge like I was doing up here. All right. I'm going to really quickly take the other one down to this size. And then we're going to flip them around and make all that the same diameter. Might as well do it like this and that way I don't have to move the jaws a lot on the chuck. See by that little tit on the end that I'm just a little bit under the center out here on my tip. I could shim under here to get it up, but it just for this I'm not even going to take the time. Touch off. It's exactly where I was. Let's go fifty thousands. Ten, twenty. 30, 40, 50. See the short curls? It actually goes faster than one or two, but you know me. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. Even in that little bit, the curls are getting longer. Oh, 
going right up here. See how tight this is? This, this. See how long this one is? I don't like the long ones. I want short ones. So what I can do here is I can either speed it up. I've taken a hundred thousandths off the diameter of this uh, piece of material. So it's going to give me longer curls. I want shorter ones so they don't get, you know, flying everywhere and hung up and flung to far fetches. So what I'm going to do is just as an experiment here, I'm going to go ten thousandths deeper at the same feed speed. Ten, twenty, thirty. 40, 50, 60 thousandths. Well, that got a long one. Let's make it go faster. That's cut smaller, and that goes longer. Feeding pretty deep and fast, so I'm taking a spring pass out so I can measure it a little bit closer. You take forty one thousandths off. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, one. Right now I'm turning, I'm in second gear, and my second gear speed is about six hundred RPMs. I'm going to turn it up to about 700. Let's see. Those are good chips. Back it out, spring pass it. By speeding up the R RPMs and keeping the depth of cut the same and keeping the speed of uh, feed in the same, I'm effectively changing how those chips come off. I'm taking a bigger cut by going faster. Dead on nuts. One three zero zero zero. So now let's clear carriage out of the way. Flip it around. And see by only doing you know, I got two parts here ready to go. So I only have to move the jaws a little bit, no back and forth. 
and I always like to get it in here and start spinning it a little bit. Now, one of the ways that I like to make sure a part's in your jaws right, I can't really do much anymore. When I was going to school back in the 70s, we had lantern post tool holders. In fact, there's on South Bend 14 inches in the school. And those lantern post tool holders, you could pull out the tool holder and stick it in backwards so the shank was sticking out and then you run that sloped edge up against your piece and you know without cranking your chuck down too tight first and then running against that would center up the piece of metal in the, the chuck then you tighten it on down. Bob can't do that very easy. And with the Loris tool holders, you can't do it that easy unless you make a special tool to do it. But this method works good too. Let's get rid of this piece. This tool's got a little back rake on the on the cutting edge. It's cutting a little bit more down at the bottom, but for just flattening this off, that's perfectly okay. Now I wouldn't recommend doing that on steel. Fifty-five to get up to a whole number. Did that one about 20 so I could get it up to 100 on the, the dial. It's easy to keep track. Now that I'm close, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to touch off on the surface that I want to match. There we go, going reverse. on that one.
another way you can do it. I'm going to go in there and touch off up there. And I'm going back out. And I'm going to move my dial back over to that mark. out of it. And I'm going to go a spring pass in it. It's a little off, but it's good enough for welding. Well, there you go. Got two blanks ready to go. I'll uh, heat these up to 230 in the oven. I'll make the little ear here that I need to make again. And see how I left a lot more stock on here. So when I'm welding, I've got a lead in and a lead out. It won't tear up the edges like it did here. Hopefully it won't tear up anything. 
<sighs> we may end this video here. I don't know how long it is. I don't know how much y'all want to watch. But this has been Bob in action. We'll go from there. If this is the end of the video, Merry Christmas.